Okay, welcome to PRS in Conversation, uh, The Return. I'm really happy to be back for another round of conversations uh, for PRS, and we have, we have a really exciting one tonight that I'm looking forward to. Well, I should say, Courtney, uh, tonight in Izmir. I know, <laughs> I know it's like late morning in L.A., so uh, thanks for joining us from so, from so far away. Uh, but we're going to be getting into the discussion about Courtney's latest film project, Hollywood. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, be talking to this uh, amazing filmmaker and this amazing project. Uh, but before we get to it, I just want to do some reminders. Uh, if you're new to the PRS YouTube channel, uh, please remember to subscribe. Uh, I'm happy to see all of the events that are now uh, unfolding in the grounds of PRS. So if you're uh, local or traveling to L.A., Make sure you uh, check out prs.org. Sign up to get reminders of all the events, the calendar. The calendar, Courtney, starting to pile up. Starting to remind know, me right? of uh, starting to remind me of the old days where uh, every day was something different. There's a Tibetan concert coming up, and uh, it's great to see. It makes me really happy. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff is on our YouTube channel or available through um, other distribution like our course offerings. So please check out prs.org. Uh, the bookstore is uh, up and running uh, with great uh, releases, so uh, you can check out the bookstore, and of course you can uh, uh, make a donation. Um, but tonight, Izmir, uh, late morning in LA, I'm so excited to be talking to uh, Courtney Sell. It's kind of hard to to sum up your introduction, so let me just pick out a, a couple <laughs> things. Uh, Courtney Sell is a, a very prolific uh, filmmaker and is... At 18, traveled the, the United States uh, filming uh, life from all his different perspectives. I think you said you went to 46 of, of the uh, states. Uh, yeah. Then a few years later, you did a film on a, a community trying to rebuild from Katrina. Uh, you did a very powerful documentary about your, your father's long battle with cancer called My Dying Day, which... Everyone should check out. It's, it's very, I mean, all the works I'm mentioning are, are very powerful. You did a, another film on a homeless group in Providence, Rhode Island, an eclectic community uh, in New York, and then uh, <laughs> the great film on the uh, immersive poems of Mandy Kahn, who is a, the uh, poet in residence for PRS. I mean, that's just some of your uh, <laughs> filmography. And uh, on your website, I really enjoyed seeing some of the metaphysical films you've done in particular uh, I'm sorry if I forget the title but the one involving Joshua Tree and another one with a lighthouse there were I, I kept yeah. I was I was fascinated with both of those and uh, he is the yeah. first filmmaker to have his films archived at the uh, Philosophical Research Society so it's my pleasure and uh, uh, my honor to welcome mm -hmm. Courtney Sell to the the round two of PRS and conversation so thank you so much <laughs> Courtney for joining us Thank you, James. This is an honor. And wow, you, you really, you really did your research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need a break after that. And I, and uh, I really just did scratch the surface. So I do encourage people to uh, to check out Courtney's uh, website and some of his videos. He has a playlist on the PRS uh, YouTube channel, uh, but also check out his website because. You know, I, I felt a little uh, ashamed of myself, to be honest, looking at all your work. You know, there's, there's I guess, more things for me to be doing right now. But uh, it was very inspiring. <laughs> and we're really going to dig into this, uh, this Hollywood project uh, from the angle of the maker, the artist, the, the ultimate gift, I think, that you've brought to the world in the voices you've captured, the tradition you've tried to capture. But before we do, uh, and you, you probably know if you've seen other episodes of this, uh, I'm obsessed with the origin stories that people have about PRS. Uh, they all seem to have one. So what's your origin story with connecting to the camp, to the particular space? You know, can you, can you tell me a little bit about how you came into PRS? And I'm asking, of course, because I'm not there and I'm standing for all the people around the world who <laughs> can't go there tomorrow like maybe you can. So if yeah. you wouldn't mind before we get started in uh, exploring your journey into making Hollywood, uh, the origin story of yours for PRS. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go, I'll go back just a little bit on that. Um, mm -hmm. I was living in New York for quite some time and was getting, feeling really burnt out. So I moved to Stockholm, Sweden and was working and filming over there. Wow. 
And um, this was around 2016, and I started feeling really burnt out. I didn't want to be making films anymore. I was completely wow. just like at the end. And I flew back to the States, um, and uh, after like maybe I think I was there for a couple months, and um, I just I like kind of decided that I was done making films, and that was that. And during that, there was about four months of a break. It was during the winter. I, um, I, I, I spent most of my time rereading some of my favorite, you know, esoteric books, uh, mystical books. And I've been a fan of Manly P. Hall since I about 16. I, I read The Secret Teachings of All Ages right around 16, 17. Wow. Um, but I had not checked back in with it since. Wow. And so during that period of four months, I jumped back into it. And just on a whim, I made my way out to L.A. And within the first two days of being here, this would have been 2018, I think, um, I had lunch with a friend and we got on the topic of Manly. And um, he told me about the PRS. Now, I didn't know the PRS existed. OK, so can I can I stop and then just interject? So what made you pick up the book again? I, was I was it? feeling I was feeling kind of I've I've always been into esotericism I've always been mm -hmm. into magic mysticism um, mm -hmm. but I was feeling I like kind of like pushed that stuff aside for a while during some like my early years I just kind of like I was too concentrated on making these films that don't really deal with esotericism yeah. at all yeah. and that kind of went a different direction and yeah. it came back to me um, there was just this craving this like deep craving. Um, because I was feeling this void and we couldn't figure out like what's going on. So, I mean, there's no better person to read when you're feeling kind of lost. Than <laughs> <Right. Hall. laughs> okay. yeah, and yeah. not only, so not only did that happen, but some of those early metaphysical works that you were explaining in the introduction came exactly from that period. I started making those works after reading certain chapters in the secret teachings and they would inspire me. Wow. And so I would make some of those experimental films directly related to certain parts of the secret teachings of all ages. Wow. So when I got to L.A. and found out about the PRS, the next day I bought a ticket to one of uh, Dr. Salyer's lectures, and it was on Homer's The Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in the back of the auditorium weeping because I had known I had found my found my tribe, found my, my second family, and found my new home. And uh, since then, they haven't been able to get rid of me. <laughs> and you, were, you had only been in L.A. for a couple days? Is that right? Like two, two three days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Homer, you know, Homer's from Izmir. Well, Izmir claims Homer. Uh, yeah. Some scholars, of course, say uh, he didn't exist. Some scholars say it's a uh, fiction. Uh, one scholar in, I think, the 1800s, I uh, said uh, Homer was a woman, but uh, wow. yeah, he's from Izmir. So very interesting that you heard. There's uh, a connection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so you go into the auditorium and you hear this lecture on what? What, what was your reaction to to the space? I mean, uh, that's a pretty big reaction. So I thought I no, sound like, no, I, sound like I want more, you know. But uh, so I guess when you got there and, and just walking into the space, because obviously you're a big. Manly Hall was a big influence in that book, you know, uh, that, yeah. that his masterpiece that you carried with you and kind of was your your comp companion for this kind of yes. res resurrection into film. But what were you like walking on to that? Because like you'd only been there two days. Other people maybe had driven thing, around it before. It's, it seems very surreal. Because we we dive into the the beauty and the sacredness of the space in Hollywood. But for me personally, my first time there. It was almost like a starstruck feeling. Interesting. It was almost like this, like interest, like you know, you're in the sacred, deeply important historical space, yeah. um, and you, whether or not you go into the library, the library is just like breathtaking. Like just walking into the library, mm -hmm. it's a whole new experience for anyone who hadn't been there before. And being in the auditorium, I remember seeing Greg on stage and just like 
I could, the, 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 uh, Manly's chair is still on the stage, yep. and you know you kind of get that like starstruck. It was like wow, the the, the man <laughs> actually sat there once. Right. You know that's cool. right. And um, hearing Greg's like amazing lecture, Greg gives the best lectures, mm-hmm. and um, it just it it was yeah. The best way I could describe it was like a homecoming for me at least, and like I was kind of starstruck and overwhelmed. Yeah. I'd have to say pretty overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, who are these people? What's like I, I, yeah, the way I describe it a lot of times to uh, when I talk to Greg is about I got there and I was like I always thought that I had my I had the amount of knowledge that needed that I could like keep up in conversation and then during their discussion afterwards I was like no can't jump in <laughs> like I'm not there yet <laughs> it'll take a couple years you know well you know you know Courtney it's un, it's amazing how many almost every origin story the word home comes up. Mm. But within a story of discovery, isn't that fascinating? You know, it's, yeah. it's a, a, a discovery, but a, a discovery of the of coming back home. It's, it's very interesting. And that's why I, I can't, they're all different, but, that, but that's the theme of finding someplace new, but you feel home and a sense of you recognition. You know, I'm, a, yeah. I'm obsessed with that, uh, uh, the statue out front where it says, thou art that, the famous right. quote, you know, you are that. And and you realize you're those people who came before seeking you know, from all different perspectives. And you see, right. you know, there, there's the statue of uh, Rorik in the library, the amazing right. Russian uh, painter and spiritualist and uh, cultural critic. And it's just, it, it's a continual unfolding, but you feel home. It's very, very yeah. interesting to me. It's very, um, I think, I think a lot of it has something to do with, uh, well, there's a lot, but, um, I think it's the all accepting, all welcoming, but also no matter where you are on your path, you'll be able to find guidance mm-hmm. within that library. You'll be able to find literature or text, no matter what your path is, they'll have it there. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you, you're you forced into, you know, maybe you want to learn more about the Upanishads. Well, you can there. Maybe you want to learn more about Aylster Crowley. Well, you can there. And it, it just yeah. everything, it, it's an incredible welcoming space. And they've done such a great job curating and the collection and even in the bookstore. Mm-hmm. My library over here is like, I often joke with Greg, it's like, I, I go into the PRS now and I'm like, I don't know what more I can get. <laughs> it's, like yeah. it's like a, it's it's an annex, right? It's a PSR <laughs> bookstore annex. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I have like you know I have like a little side library here, but um, well, you know, you're yeah, it, you're really lucky to have come for you know. I lived in LA for over twenty years, uh, Hollywood, North Hollywood, and I was lucky because I was attending lectures in PRS since the early nineties and. Uh, Dr. Heller's Ecclesia Gnostica. I was a, a student and a devotee there for 20 years. The Bodhi Tree and the Psychic Eye and all these things. But I had to kind of discover yeah. them. Um, it's it's almost unbelievable that you were there two days. And uh, boom, well, you know, there you go. It's funny because like you were on a you were someone was pushing you on this path. You know, get going, <laughs> right, get right. going. We got a film to make. Get going. <laughs> well, it was funny because I actually wrote um, I wrote to them. And I remember this was when I first heard about them before I actually attended the lecture. And I wrote, I think I might have written to Kelly, the vice president, and just said, you know, I'm this filmmaker. I want to work with you guys. I want to screen some movies with you, blah, blah, blah. And they responded so politely and nice. And but like the the connection wasn't there. I think right. they still needed to know who I was. And yeah. like, yeah. so it it. And then they all became some of my best friends. So yeah. So it all well, I I, th- I think I heard a story about you when I think you had come up originally with maybe uh, hey, hey, let's do a Manly Hall documentary or something. And Greg's response was just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and then it grows into a much bigger project, which we'll get into. But before we do, so you're talking 2018. That's only a, three years ago, and just this past week. You had the screening of Hollywood on the PRS campus yeah, in magical. the in the auditorium. That's that's pretty astonishing. I want to take a moment and honor that. And let's point <laughs> out that there was COVID in the middle of it, extensive <laughs> lockdowns and disruption. So I want to 
just take a second and say that that's that's very inspiring, Courtney, and congr- oh, congratulations. Okay. Oh, Before we you. get deeper into it, it's a it's quite an achievement to go from kind of finding home or refinding your home, or uh, and mm-hmm. then three years later uh, emerging with this offering to the the tradition, the community, the place and space of LA that that is it's just a, a it's like a continually unfolding lotus you know, uh, about all of the eclectic contributors to that tradition that's still going on today at, at PRS, which we'll talk about. So let me just ask, uh, how was it? How was it to uh, be in the, uh, in the screening, in the auditorium? I, I, it's I, the world, I should say it's the, I should say it's the world premiere, by the way, it, was the premiere. It was, yeah. The world premiere of the final cut. We it's, did a test yeah. run of the rough right. cut virtually during COVID. Um, yep. So I wasn't in the auditorium. I, I had seen the movie so many times. So I spent the whole movie screening in Greg's office, in Manley's office, Greg and Manley's office. And then Greg came and got me when it was over. And I got to you know go on stage and we did the discussion. But um, I was thinking about this last night, actually, of I didn't realize at the time because I was so nervous. Um, the incredible full circle where there's actually scenes in the documentary like of Manley in that auditorium given a, given right. a lecture there's snippets yeah. and the fact that the audience was watching in that auditorium <laughs> of Manley giving it's, it's like right. very meta yeah yeah and it gets more complicated than that because then there's the the story you just told about you crying in the auditorium, which is probably yeah. available on our YouTube playlist. So maybe if someone watches Greg's <laughs> lecture on Homer, they may hear you in the background. <laughs> so think? someone is watching this filmmaker come home to a text he read when he was 16 and gave up filmmaking and then found yeah. himself in the auditorium crying. And now <laughs> he's in Manly Hall's office while it's being screened worldwide. Very, in the, very it's like a, it's the aerobus. You know, the snake eating very, its own tail. Very, very blessed and, and so truly, like, it's such an honor. And I couldn't believe it when I was when I was sitting in the office waiting for the film to end. And I just sat there meditating and was like, this okay. is so surreal. Okay. Uh, hold on, <laughs> hold on, Courtney. So Court, I'm going off on all these different directions. I keep coming. Hold on a second. So this film that... that um, for uh, viewers and listeners who may, who may not know, you did a you did kind of a, a rough cut. You called it, but it was it, it kind of yeah. wasn't done. You knew you were going to expand it, uh, but overall, it took you know a year and a half or so, right, or maybe even longer. And then that, when it's being screened in the premiere, I understand you not being there, but I come on, are you really just meditating at the at Manly Hall? I, I mean, I how was, how was, was that was, feeling? Because it's a you know, it's a pretty long film, and so you're in there in the incredibly <laughs> ornate office with that desk and the the different relics from all over the world, right. east and west. Right. What was that like? It was. I was trying to read. I was actually trying to read, and I couldn't because my brain was just like so all over the place. And I then just decided to just sit there and take it all in. It's just pretty <laughs> Don't magical. do something, sit there. Yeah, it's the best <laughs> advice. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then... Um, were you surprised uh, at how, because uh, I heard it was, um, you know, it was, it was packed. So were you surprised when you walked in yeah. and it was over? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Um, that was really cool. And I hope everybody liked it. Um, I just... Uh, yeah, I'm used to screening to small audiences I've, because most of my work is still could be considered underground. It's still like very like no budget, um, you know, <laughs> it, nothing fancy. So a lot of the venues that these films would screen at aren't like, you know, Sundance or, you know, right, or right. like big festivals. Right. So um, that was that might arguably have been the biggest audience that I screened to, which was really awesome because I wouldn't want to screen a movie anywhere else. And the fact that, you know, that many people had interest in it and showed up. And even during, um, I shouldn't say this, um, it was one of the first days of the mandate. So so that was really because I thought that that was going to just destroy attendance that people might not have. They forgot their card or something like that. I hadn't got um, it yet. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it worked out. Yeah. And it was it was quite magical. Um, there was a moment of funny panic beforehand, though, because I Greg started laughing about this. Is like I didn't even think that 
there was going to be anything afterwards. I thought the movie was screening. Everyone was going to just go and leave. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Who's on, the, who's on the panel tonight? And I was like, oh, my God. So I'm texting friends like, hey, do you want to come and be on the panel? And then like, so thankfully, um, and I thought it was fitting um, to just um, have Greg and I. Because Greg yeah, is I, I think like, so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Greg, I, I, I've probably told him this, but like I consider him almost like a silent producer of the movie like without his blessing for me to make it it wouldn't have been able to be made yeah um so it's a very special thing and a very uh, he's someone i hold dear to my heart well um, it, it it is a special thing i mean you can't you summed it up perfectly by uh, there there it's being screened and and so many uh great conversations with people involved now and I guess it's showing old footage of uh, Manly Hall and in that auditorium in and of itself it, it is a special yeah. thing and it is a, a great offering to the community and, and the history of this of these of seekers in this amazing part of the world that we call you know the kind of Beachwood Canyon area Los, <laughs> Los Angeles Hills area but LA in general but you know what else is a special thing is that you took the journey that is mm. a special thing. That, that film didn't make itself. You didn't do it alone. So let's get into it because uh, I, I want to have, if you don't mind, a discussion that could be considered a companion piece uh, for people who don't know. There's a, there's a great panel discussion after the virtual screening of the kind of, I don't want to say rough cut because you, you weren't done yet, but uh, the uh, unfinished version that you did earlier, I think it was in the spring. And it's a yeah. really great conversation with uh, some of the cast that's interviewed for the film, uh, including Mitch Horowitz, Dr. Sawyer, Mandy Kahn. Of course, you interview like Dr. Heller in the movie. Uh, but this panel discussion yeah. is, is a great conversation about uh, the sacred space of L.A. in general, but also of PRS and the tradition and the eclectic uh, participants. But I would like to dial in with you taking this, this journey, uh, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, so does that sound good? Yeah, I, I. So the film began at the peak of lockdown. Okay, now let I've me. Working, do you mind if yeah. I just throw out this this the uh, the call word because it interviews? Sure. I it definitely seems like you were called. Maybe you sure. had planned about doing this uh, film at some point like this, and maybe like dream. But what was the call to make this film? Yeah, you kind of couldn't you couldn't ignore it. You know, the Campbell call it's, to adventure. It, it's for for me for subject matter for a, it was a passion project, and yes, it's something that I had, had always wanted to do since being here. But um, the calling hit, or the 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 inspiration hit during the um, during lockdown, where we were living in a time of fear, uncertainty, anxiety, and what better way to, you know, deal with that type of, you know, fear and, and the unknown than like really emerging yourself as much as possible into some of these ideas, these philosophical ideas, these metaphysical ideas as a way to, I guess, selfishly comfort yourself, but also try to bring comfort and inspiration to others through it so mm -hmm. yeah I could sit in my house and just keep reading throughout the whole lockdown <laughs> and that's only doing me good but like there and also there is something and we this is basically what the whole film's about there's something that you can't ignore especially if you're a like a feeling person about Beachwood Canyon that being a you know a filmmaker a documentary filmmaker that it's I had to I had to try to figure that out like obviously I knew I wasn't going to get a concrete answer of like right. why is this place you know have all these institutions in it but um it was almost this like like this is gonna happen I'm gonna do this I'm gonna line up and you know like I think like one afternoon I wrote out the whole treatment um I sent it over to Greg and he gave the thumbs up with him like five minutes he wrote the uh, email back saying like go do it you know absolutely yeah. And so um, it began there. Now, I should also make mention that I don't have a car in L.A., so the whole movie was made on foot. <laughs> I like to say that as almost like a Werner Herzog style, well, the, the whole that, movie was made on foot, which it was. That's when, the, uh, I, that's when my, the metaphor of journey becomes a, a, all too literal. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, yeah, right? yeah, not having a car in L.A. is very interesting. And 
having to walk everywhere or take buses or yeah, it's very it's very interesting. Which is um the single step. It might play yeah, and it might play into um a big reason why some of these ideas came to me because when you walk in LA, you observe a lot more than people who are just breezing down the freeway. I mean, yeah. you really get the and um well, it also yeah, so, it also creates a space as if you're walking, uh, especially everything's so spread out. If you're walking to some of those great interviews you did, you know there could be a sense of you never know how how those steps influenced even the difficulty and the lengthiness of having to go to uh, not necessarily the obvious of preparation, but you may have been centered in a way that you wouldn't have if you had just been on traffic on the one hundred and one. Oh, I, I think so. You have time to kind of gather yourself while walking to like with all the equipment in the backpack walking to the prs or walking to griffith park um because that's my that's my neighborhood and so like if there was going to be an interview it would have had to be either on zoom or here mm -hmm. um, because i wasn't taking ride shares um, or anything like that mm -hmm. and i'm not saying this as like this like pompous like oh i made a movie on foot i mean it's just like it's the way the process happened and right. i think you're right it's like it's a bit, the film probably would look a lot different if it wasn't made in that manner. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, was there, um, obviously, uh, it may be difficult to pick a time where you said, all right, I'm doing it, but because you said you had these things in mind, but was, was there, was there a conversation you had or was there, I don't know, something you read or was there a particular day that it was the pivot point between Okay, I'm going to do this. I mean, I know you. You know, well, like that. Maybe that moment that had made you sit down and write the well, treatment, um, or was it more the, of a the, gradual thing? The idea did come, and then I wrote the treatment. However, I started filming, and about maybe like um, I scheduled some interviews, started filming B-roll, and I was still unsure about where it was going. How on earth am, am I supposed to connect the dots to such a huge story, monumental <laughs> story? <laughs> And in once on Halloween, um, yeah, so maybe it was like a month and a half in. On Halloween, um, we did, uh, I went up to uh, the reservoir with Maja, and mm -hmm. in the documentary, she does the I Ching reading and gets right. the reading, that which we use at the end of the movie. That, after that reading, Maja and I were walking down the hill, and I remember we both looked at each other, and it was like, all right, game on. Like, we now got it. Like, this is, this is, yeah, now, like, they've spoken. <laughs> so, this is it. So, here we go. Let's do this. Like, buckle in. Well, and I think besides the uh, uh, On Foot in LA, which is a great title of a, maybe a memoir, but besides that, even though you're, you're prolific and accomplished, and I didn't know at that one point you had given up on film and found your way back, but I seem to recall in interviews um, and talks that you, you weren't necessarily prepared to do this kind of project. Not never mind the conceptual aspect of it, but you know, you mentioned having the stuff in your backpack. But technically, this was this wasn't just going to a comfort zone. I'm going to go make a movie because I don't want to be in COVID. This was mm. stretching, right? As a filmmaker, in a way that you hadn't been stressed before, having to discover new stuff and figure stuff out. And that's yeah. what's so great about that call because we're not necessarily as prepared as we need to be, but we have to answer it. That's right, right. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like hard to sleep if you don't answer it. If you're just letting it, just right. like even though you're not prepared, you're like, I got to figure stuff out. Well, I told I told Greg this the other night, after the night of the screening, that um, at being a completely DIY independent filmmaker, this movie. I have to believe, I mean, I'm not telling myself short on this, but like that is the peak of what I can do on my own without, you know, any financial assistance, any, you know, I didn't have a crew. I don't really know how to run cameras. So I right. like quickly that. So I don't, so Hollywood is probably the peak of my abilities of making a film under those conditions. Like I couldn't go any further. Yeah. And there was times where a lot of, not a lot, but certain friends kept wanting me to keep going and keep going. And I kind of had to finally find the courage to say, like, I think we're good. This is as far as I can go <laughs> before I collapse. You know? yeah. Because we did pick up again after that, that virtual screening 
Right. And I was already exhausted. And right. we went on further and further. And thank God that happened. Um, my dear friend Leanne, who lives at Crotona, um, uh, she became involved in the film. And she was such an incredible contribution and such a huge help. And had the um, virtual screening been it, I would have not been able to have some of that really amazing further information on you know, Cretona theosophy and yeah. all that stuff. Well, your film does such a great job of not only the capturing the voices, uh, but the but the physical spaces, uh, both in yeah. the story and then primary image, but in your evocation of it. And uh, was there a, I mean, maybe this came after your uh, virtual screening of the of the of what you had done already, uh, or maybe it came before it. But was there a point where you? As I want to stress, what I think is very inspiring about the story is if, you know, I read your biography and you were thinking, well, yeah, it makes sense. This guy made a film during COVID and not that it's not a great accomplishment, but I don't think that captures the, the kind of sense when you answer the call that you, that you're not prepared. Mm. Even if you're a filmmaker and you're experienced that you're going to be stressed and tested and stretched in ways that you can't imagine. So I, I don't want uh, viewers to think that this was kind of just, a comfort zone for you to go make a film. Uh, and so that's what I find very inspiring about, about your story, the journey of, of turning this into the film that was just premiered. But was there a point, because often, in, you know, if you think of the Campbell uh, cycle kind of screened onto your journey, there's mm -hmm. that point where the hero almost gives up at the, in the, uh, the kind of darkest moment, the, na the nadir. Mm -hmm. Was there a yeah. point where you were like, it's not going to happen. Maybe it was COVID, yeah. maybe it was finance, but was there that point? And then if there was, what, what rescued it? What got you out and started the, the, the swing back up out of the dark, the dark nature? Yeah, I actually, I actually did shelve it for a split second. That I think like maybe two months after the, the test screening, the, the rough cut screening. Wow. Um, I didn't, I, I, I was so burnt out um, and mm -hmm. I just didn't want to have to yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't, I kept, it'd be, it's just my nature. And I think it would be the nature of a, a lot of artists. But when mm -hmm. self-doubt comes creeping in, it, it, each person deals with it in different ways, yeah. uh, especially in artistic creation. And I fight really hard against it. But there's times where if I find that like, I'm rewatching something and I don't feel that spark of inspiration, I'm ready to burn the whole project. <laughs> but then I'll, you know, take a couple of days, walk away, come back to it and be like, oh, I see, I see what we're getting at here. And you just make sense of it. Um, I definitely struggle with that. So yeah, there, there was definitely a time, I think it was maybe for like a good two months where I just decided that like, maybe what I'll do is shelve it. And in like five years, wow. there'll be interest that someone would want. And I could just like sell it to another filmmaker <laughs> who might want this archival right. footage. And then like, wow. but Incredible. Then I got re-hit with uh, the inspiration and the kind of um i couldn't tell you how it worked but yeah it just kind of like yeah I, I i regained what i felt like i was losing <laughs> incredible well yeah it's a good thing you know it wasn't a manuscript and you just didn't throw it in the <laughs> right. fire yeah um i have a good background of doing that by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's very interesting that it happened um after the discussion and and I'll just remind uh, uh, viewers again that that this this discussion panel is uh, it's on the YouTube channel still. It's about an hour and a half long, uh, including audience questions, and re I found it really interesting, especially hearing from all the different perspectives. But it's, it's it's interesting that it happened after there, like yeah, isn't it? Yeah, um, and I have no real idea as to why, because you kind of walk away on a high because people seem to like it. It was yeah. like you did something that people seem to like. Yeah. Um, and I think the pressure of uh, the, after that screening, there was a lot more pressure now because people had already seen a right. vision of it. And, <laughs> and so there were definitely a lot of like suggestions being yeah. pushed over to me yeah. and, and and so um i think the pressure became a little more extreme not that i'm i mean i do live in hollywood but i i can't even i don't even 
work in the system of Hollywood. So it's not like right. I had like money people breathing down my neck. It was just um, the pressure of like trying to deliver something that I hope audience that is into this type of thing would enjoy and be able to pull from and not be mad at me for making, you know, because, you know, we're dealing with some subject matter that I think a lot of people, well, I know a lot of people take very serious. It's a very sacred subject matter mm -hmm. and you just don't want to botch it. Yeah. Yeah. And with a you lot of, you don't want to do it disrespect. You don't. Right. That's what I was going to say. A lot of reverence. And, uh, I guess what were the, you know, you had a lot of helpers along the way. You mentioned Greg, you mentioned PRS, but, uh, uh, and you mentioned Maj. Who are some of the helpers that in these moments, um, whether technical or even in, in just in interviews that, that were uh, angels in a way to the project uh, that yeah. allowed it to continue. Because what's very interesting, again, about your story is seeking, while it is something we all have to do alone, is not something that you can do by yourself. You know, there's always, whether it's teachers or yeah. Angels, so to speak, or helpers, as Campbell would say, they kind of show up at the right time when you need them. So looking back, what were some of the sides? Obviously, thankful to the cast and all that. But I'm just curious, what, looking back now at the end, who were kind of Which some I'm, of those helpers? I'm fortunate because, yeah, I'm fortunate because the cast itself is... Um, is um, a majority of the cast are like my, some of my teachers. So Maja Literally. is a great yeah. guy for me. Yeah, Greg is a teacher to me. Um, and I do have to say, um, my friend Leanne was a huge part of um, helping me reach the finish line. Um, she had seen the original cut and... Um, we had many discussions about it. We both realized it wasn't done. It wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. And she helped me build up the spine and mm -hmm. connect the dots and connect the pieces and expand on certain things. And even the there's elements now where my dad actually, my dad's story comes into play. And she was a big part of, you know, wow. encouraging me to pull that in as well. Um, so she, like the whole cast, Mitch, um, Incredible. I mean, if you if you ever feel you know like you need a, a, a shot of inspiration in the arm, all you have to do is pick up any one of Mitch's books. Yep. So I don't um, even think you need a book. I think you can check his any of his podcast appearances or even his Instagram his podcast, pages. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a he's unique and profound and really energizing. Yeah there there was a there was a lot of help. There was a lot of help and. Um, <sighs> It's, it's nice when you're making a film and everybody involved is so supportive. There's no combat. There's no sort of friction. Everybody was enthusiastic about it. Everybody was really supportive. And I think if someone began to see me starting to fall or, you know, get depressed, you know, they, there was not one person within the film that wouldn't have like come to my side and, you know, helped out and encouraged such Leanne certainly did that. She was a huge help for were, that. Were you surprised that your, your dad's story started yeah. coming in? Yeah. 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 That, Cause you felt like you maybe yeah, had I, told that story, right? Yeah. And I thought, Really? I fought for a while. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see the connection. I did not see it. And Leanne kept telling me, like, there is a ginormous connection because this is your journey. <laughs> ginormous. So, I love that. <laughs> I love and it. So it's like you're go you're going to have to do that. And then um wow. the self consciousness of like mm -hmm. I don't know, like Throwing my dad in a in a uh, a movie about Manly P. Hall is kind of a big like that's a, that's a big stretch. So and yeah. I think it worked out in the long run. Um, but I think the only way it would work is I had to come to terms with it was my journey, and that's how that would be the spine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was your dad? Uh, I don't know. If you could say how do how do I put it? Was he kind of more practically <laughs> practical based, and not maybe a manly hall reader? Was that was yeah, that some I, of the uh, that's, dichotomy that's, that's, involved? Yeah, that's pretty pretty right on. Um, he uh, he was a 
seeker for sure, but a different type of seeker and mm -hmm. uh, went, went a different path. But I do have to say the, uh, the connection that I feel with him is we were both seekers and yep. I, I am and he and yep. so like I said at the if I, if he was alive and I brought him to the PRS mm -hmm. I can almost guarantee he would he would find something there yeah. and become a dedicated follower I can almost guarantee that yeah um I think the, the thing with him was he had um he didn't really have the resources that a seeker needed because we're from, you know, a different generation. Boston. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, me too. Generation. My family's from Boston. Yeah. Oh yeah, and so there's not really well, there's no PRS in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, that that generation too is different. But well, what's very interesting is my dad passed away from COVID uh, a year ago. Oh, sorry. And, you know, he was um, he he lived a long life, and what's been interesting in the grieving process is that. How the presence of your, I guess anyone, but of course your father, uh, it still becomes a teaching presence in moments that are very, very surprising as you continue to kind of be open to their continuing kind of presence through reflection. And that seems yeah. to be, uh, that's what I was struck with when you said he made his way into, the, into this film, especially as you had made that really powerful film about the days but but the, the teacher's still there in some way and you're learning different things and maybe he's you know his presence is teaching different things now than in I would, previous I would, I would, kind of material circumstances but it's a really powerful aspect i'm, I'm really glad you brought that that in oh yeah. thanks yeah it was it, it was a struggle for me that was that i had to really be talked into that one um and it took me quite some time to uh to feel comfortable with it Maybe also because I'm, you know, I made that, I made his film in 2007. Yes. I've been dealing with that material for quite yes. some time. And so I decided, like, I decided that, like, after Hollywood, like, 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 for his, his story has now been told twice. Right. So, so it's kind of like a, a therapeutic Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know now we move forward and yeah. you know he yeah. got his you know celebration as well and you yeah. know people seem to like it so uh, i crack up to the fact that you know well, it was my doing but still it cracks me up that the, there's a movie that has you know dr heller in it man Lee <laughs> hall and then my dad arrived right <laughs> yeah yeah but that's the element of your of your journey that i think so important and it's kind of a i see it as a bookend uh, to yeah. the other one, uh, I think maybe you're right that 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 chapter maybe it'll be told again. But I, I see them as a, a bookends, uh, even though it was 2007. But now that you mentioned Dr. Heller, who is uh, mm -hmm. uh, God, such an inspiration to so many and has given so much of his time in, in lecturing and leading Gnostic um, yeah. ceremonies as a as his role as Bishop of Ecclesia Gnostica. And but, his books are amazing. Oh, his books are unbelievable. So what was it like to uh, sit down with him for a while? I mean, you do get, of course, we all get to see it, right? But there's always this kind of uh, envy of, man, it must be so cool to go. Because who knows what didn't make it in the film, and then you get to meet him, and maybe you're talking after. You say, uh, cut in the camera, and it's just, you really want to know whenever I watch you know, Oliver Stone's interviews or anyone's interviews or like the famous... Uh, the Campbell interviews with Bill Moyers, you, know, you wonder what mm. were the conversations after? What didn't make it? You know, uh, what was it just like for Bill Moyers to sit with Joseph Campbell for all those hours? Uh, you wanted right. to talk to him about that. So I guess I'm asking you that, that question. What was it like for you to, because you probably didn't know him that well if you'd only got there in 2018. And what was that like? Yeah. I had, um, I believe I had attended one of his lectures at the PRS before him, but I had never met him. Um, he was one of the main, the first people I thought of that I wanted to get involved in this, but I had no connection to him. So the, thankfully for the PRS. Um, and so we did the interviews at the Basant Lodge. Mm -hmm. Um, Kelly, the vice president of the PRS came with me. Wow. Um, and because I was pretty intimidated. <laughs> yeah, right. Go alone. <laughs> right. And go into, and you walk into the office and there he is, uh, you know, a picture of, 
of Manly, and then an autograph of Young, right. or a handwritten letter of Young, mm -hmm. and the, just the, the, the legend and the, 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 the amazing stories and going to like, what did, they, what did we talk about after the cameras were off? Well, I don't know if many people know this, but he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. He has one of the greatest sense of humor I've ever dealt with. <laughs> so yeah. we, we really did talk about, like even when the cameras were off, we kept the conversation going about like, you know, what was Beachwood Canyon like and, you know, in the 70s and, you know, it, when you what used to go to Old Crotona, what was that like, and all this stuff. And all of his story, and spending time with celebrities, old Hollywood celebrities right. and all this stuff. And all of his stories were like sprinkled with this incredible humor. There was never anything that was ominous or, you know, some sort of, even if it was, we were getting into kind of like, um, I did want to ask him about his past and his mm -hmm. youth, and I know that that you know comes with a lot of baggage because you know escaping the Communist Party and yeah, all yeah. That well, yeah, first the Nazis, then the, uh, the, the, Nazis, the, the, the Hungarian the Soviets. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, and he's it's seen a whole, lot. He's seen a lot. Yeah, the whole um, the whole time he's so humble and he tells these stories with extreme, you know humor and excitement and happiness and you wouldn't ex you would there was no depression there was no thought of like being sad and mm -hmm. um subsequently actually um he delivered a lecture at the prs uh, months after we did i call i finally wrapped hollywood but it had not come out yet mm -hmm. and um he did a lecture on the relationship between manly p hall and carl Jung, mm -hmm. and we filmed it um and the PRS put it up on their page and it got like one of the highest views of like all their videos. And he called me up and I didn't have his number and Dr. Heller calls you up. And you're yep. like, whoa. Like, yep. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he's, he's, he's using a landline. Yeah. Using a landline <laughs> and he's so excited. And he said to me, this was one of the great quotes. He said to me, he goes, had I known we were going to have, you know, what, 20,000 people watching this, I could have sold out Dodger Stadium. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I said, I think you could have, and maybe we'll set that up one day. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah, wow. Um, I guess another question I had looking back now, what, because you had read, uh, you'd, you said you'd read a lot into, including Manly P. Hall's masterpiece, but you studied a lot of mysticism and esoteric. What, I guess, what did you learn that you were surprised you learned? I'm not so I'm, much learn more about an area you didn't know, but you were already interested in, but knew you would learn more. But what was looking back now were some of the things where you were really kind of surprised at, at what you kind of heard or connected. The, 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 the dots that connected between some of the information and wisdom that I was reading to my own both creative and development process as a human and like mm. I've done a lot of pivots in my life and even though I knew a lot of the information that was in a lot of those texts over there I didn't really put them into practice until later on in life until it like kind of connected with me mm -hmm. and when I was rereading all of this stuff years ago um I, I am actually shocked, though, because I, I was a rebellious youth. I wasn't too good in school. I was a failure in math. Um, I didn't even pass, you know, whatever percentage you need for the SATs for math. I just right. bombed the whole thing. <laughs> and what I found that was fascinating now is, you know, Pythagoras and all these mathematic equations and all this stuff that Manley talks about in the secret teachings that specifically um, like hits me hard and it's hard for me to like process or figure out why it's hitting me so hard but it is and it comes mm -hmm. in, in waves and learning like um, that kind of stuff and I don't know it's I would I certainly wouldn't be I mean this is a pretty obvious statement, but I certainly wouldn't be where I am right now as a person, as an artist, had it not been for knowing and following up on some of those texts. Mm -hmm. um, and it has nothing to do with like, 
oh, well, I really need to learn about this because I need to know about this. If I'm going to hang out at the PRS, I need to know about <laughs> this. It has everything to do with, like, every time I, I dive into it, Manly writes about uh, uh, Initiates of the Flame, but I love finding the convergence of, of all those things, of how there is a main general theme that comes to many of the things that, you know, you know in between if it's Yuri and the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, um, God, you know, even if you start reading some like uh, the Kabbalah, and it, it's, uh, there, there's, uh, there's, it, you know, it, there's a that's there's this convergence, and it makes me so happy. Even you know, like early Christian texts, and um, and it it helps guide you on your path, whether or not you um, follow that specific belief system. But just knowing about it is such like a great guide. A roadmap. It's a roadmap. Yeah, and I like I like how you uh, alluded to, you know, text as information versus experience, and the texts you're talking about need to be experienced. Uh, they're yeah. not information. It's, uh, and I think your film, although it is very informative, uh, but watching it, reflecting on it, it is more. It it needs to be experienced in the way that you're participating and taking in the things you hear and the, the things you see. And so, you know, again, that's that's uh, you know, congratulations on creating just the particular work, not only the journey behind it, of course, which is uh, inspiring, but you have created such a multi-dimensional text that needs to be experienced in the same way of the of the text that you admire that you may be pointed to on the bookshelf and it's here you know those voices are here the illusions the connections the images you've put uh, are here and and they will need to be rewatched i mean i've rewatched uh, uh, to to um, approach it in the same way you would approach these these works that you're talking about yeah it's a po- it's a poetic truth it would i have no i have very little interest in like born on this date moved here on this day i mean we you have to have some of that to have a conventional narrative and we do have some of that in hollywood especially in the construction of the prs and um but for the most part it's more of a uh, like a poetic reality i know that we were talking about herzog earlier but like you know, Herzog talks about the ecstatic truth, mm-hmm. where you know, it's you. It's like, yeah, like you were saying, it's an experience. It's mm-hmm. uh, you're kind of like expanding, you know, yeah. the kind of formal, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and it needs to be like with with Herzog's films. You wouldn't think that this documentary tends to have this uh, false notion that you kind of watch it, learn what happened, and you kind of move on, but. With Herzog's films and with this film, it needs to be rewatched. Maybe not right away, but maybe mm-hmm. a few years later, and you'll pick out different things. And that is always what these great texts do, because they speak to you and you participate in in them. And you've you've constructed that. Uh, well, thank you. That's and, like, and that <laughs> that's a testament. And now it exists. You know, these people are they're not recorded as data, but you know, I think you captured the presence. And then the voices that were of the cast, of the interviews, and then the ones that, you know, quote unquote, haunt the narrative, like that aren't physically with us anymore, like like Manly Hall. And I really yeah. congratulate you on that. I hope people do read all the books, especially by the, yeah. the guests that you have, whether Dr. Heller or Mitch Horowitz. But yeah. it's a caveat. It's, a, it's an entering point. And, um, and, and I really, I really want to express that, that you've, I think you've created Thank that you. kind of multi-dimensional experiential opportunity that people will sit down and watch Hollywood. Uh, well, I see the works that you're, you're talking about when you're trying to create that engagement, that participation. It's also, it's also one of the challenges was how to make it like really like audience viewer friendly. Mm-hmm. So it's not so esoteric that someone who doesn't right. know about any of this couldn't, yeah. watch and pull from yeah but you don't also want to dumb it down because this is very significant profound mm-hmm. wisdom that has been passed on by these great teachers yep but you you somehow want to make it friendly enough for just you know someone who has no idea about any of this material to still be able to follow along and hopefully remain interested 
Yeah. Well, I, I think they will remain interested and maybe find themselves returning to it. I know I will. I can see myself watching that every few years. Um, oh, for, wow. And for different reasons. Uh, because it is a companion. I mean, it, it's entered the tradition and has kind of become a vehicle. Um, and again, I mean... Dr. Heller has so many books, and Mitch Horowitz, as you could, you could, as you said, watch him for hours and read his books for hours. But they're there, and Mandy, and you know, Dr. Sawyer, and even the places, you know, that that you captured in the images. So there you are, you know, returning that uh, coming out of the Campbell, uh, I guess, uh, hero cycle we talked about. You know, that's the boon that you're returning to the community, and uh, you're very humble, I'm sure, but it is it is a treasure. You didn't that you uh, took this journey and came out with to, to share with the community. So I really want to congratulate you on that. It means and so uh, much to me. Thank you. Yeah, and I think it's a treasure not only in in and of itself, but hearing the journey because so many of us there's so many times people could you know ignore the call or not hear it or you know as Dr. Mm -hmm. Heller always says when he's talking about Gandalf, you know, you have to, you have to answer the, the wizard knocking on the door, you know, but poor, <laughs> poor Frodo had no idea what he was into or Bilbo for that matter. So, uh, and you, you, I, I really appreciate hearing this part of the journey because I think sometimes it gets lost in the thing, you know, you just had the premiere and it's out there and has all these great names attached to it who are in it. But I appreciate this time of, of hearing the, the personal elements and the struggles and the kind of the the uh, the, the LA on foot, the, the movie making on foot and by yourself and and kind of shelving it and adding to it and it's I think that's inspiring itself on all of, uh, to anyone who's interested in doing anything but also in in seeking itself, right? Yeah, it's the process itself was pretty monumental and. You know, you go through periods Perfect word. after. Sorry. Yeah, it's Perfect and then word. like once it's done. Yeah, I don't know. I never really feel like this like huge like relief or excitement. I'm I'm proud of it. I'm happy that it went through, and I am excited. But it's not like I still feel like like the the journey is still moving on, and whether or not it's you know. Because in a way, that is a document of a journey, mm -hmm. um, even though it has, you know, different people in it. But like, yep. it, and I didn't realize that until much later on. And so that's a document of a specific moment in time in my journey. And my journey is still. Yep. You're not no done. <laughs> so there will be a lot more films, but um, I, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's weird. You almost just feel kind of like. Um, well, there's an exhaustion that comes with it for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised you spent the premiere in Manley Hall's office. In some way, it's perfect because, you know, Campbell says the hardest part of the hero's journey is actually the return, you know, when it kind, mm. of, when it kind of ends and you're readjusting to, well, that aspect of it ending and you've delivered the, the boon because at that point, he says it's the hero's tested in different ways. So I, I, I think it fits that you were in Manly Hall's office taking it in because, as you said, it's, your, your journey is not over. But in some way, that's, that's fitting in, the, in, in a way of processing more than being in the audience of the packed auditorium, you know? But yeah, uh, what an honor, too, to be able to just sit in Manly Hall's yes. office. Like, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's, again, going from years ago where I, you know, was sitting in the very back of the auditorium listening to Greg talk about Homer's yeah. The Odyssey, and then yeah. the transition to be yeah. sitting in Manley's office while, yeah. you know, the film is screening. It is something that's really, it'll be, it's a milestone for sure in my life, I, I would have to say. And, you know, I don't want, this film's too personal, and uh, it was such a passion project that I didn't want to give it away. Like it needed to be there. It needed, it did. I, I did. There was never a thought of film festivals. There was never a thought of that. It needed to be there. And yeah. personally, I wouldn't care if, you know, it didn't get the amount of exposure it would have, if it did get accepted at festivals, if it did that. It's too important to the journey the prs and all of these other institutions that it needs to be centric here mm -hmm. and so to have the screening yes at the prs it's it's yeah. quite an honor actually yeah. um and as we know from these kind of seeking there there is an urgency but there's no rush 
yeah, it, it will make its way to the people who who kind of reach out to it, especially now with the uh, technology. But speaking of which, how do people see it? Yeah, we I've, I've decided that um, after immediately after the the premiere, uh, the um, the PRS, I'm kind of uh, how shall I say I'm getting I'm growing more and more distant in regards to having a relationship with distributors mm -hmm. and I would much rather have work that means so much both to myself and is a part of the PRS family uh, that the PRS essentially donate to the PRS because they already archive most of my films mm -hmm. already and this one in particular they can stream so they they started a, a Vimeo channel and mm -hmm. um, it's just a pay-per-view stream like VOD and it's right. directly through the PRS so right. um, you'd be supporting you know the PRS yep. supporting the film and um, it's cutting out the middleman yep. and just allowing and also the other thing that I really like is if I did decide to go with a distributor it would most likely get tossed with like 20 other releases and not given the proper you know reverence mm -hmm. reverence or attention or mm -hmm. not like, it, it, but like having it directly to the prs makes through the prs makes me really excited because that means for someone anybody who is interested in anything related to what this movie has they then have to go directly to the prs whether it be yes. virtually or you yes. know in person to find mm -hmm. the movie yeah and, and, I, I, and I love that idea. And I think most people in the film, as far as the people I know, would probably feel that all of it should go to the to PRS because, as you said, no no donations are getting cut or split or whatever. It's all going directly to the Philosophical Research Society founded by Manley Hall in 1934 and where Dr. Heller lectured since the 60s or early 70s. And uh, something beautiful in that, and maybe you wouldn't, you know, you may have not have a million downloads tomorrow, and maybe if it was on, right. you know, Amazon, you would, or maybe not a million, but, but, it'll be there, just like those books yeah. on your shelf. You know, they they're they they're at a different pace. Yeah, so, I, I love it. But it's I'm sure like, Greg will add uh, the Vimeo link below, just so so people can watch and can uh, pay to, and it all goes directly to the funding of uh, PRS you know, activities, the space, the upkeep, the support yeah. of artists and scholars. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be quite an amazing, amazing thing. And um, I should also, I think I'm allowed to say this. Um, I'm now in production because the journey is continuing on. And it was funny after the end of Hollywood, where do you go from here? I, for me as a filmmaker, I kind of just covered all the subject matter I wanted to for like my entire film career. <laughs> yeah. All in that one movie. Yeah. Where do you go from here? And um, came up with an idea after reading some of um, these new pressings that uh, PRS has been putting out of Manley's, mm -hmm. uh, the signature editions. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm currently in production of um, a documentary that's inspired by the therapeutic value of music written by Manley P. Hall. Wow. Um, and it's going to be a... Um, probably like an hour long documentary and we already have such amazing people involved and it awesome. just goes about how um, music is healing and, and, you know, going into the esoteric background of music has used as healing, a healing guide. And um, that is going to be hopefully the start of a uh, series of short documentaries that would be inspired, not based on, but inspired by, uh, some of Manley's texts and mm -hmm. all of those will then go also to that Vimeo streaming page. Mm -hmm. So it'd be all, you know, PRS related. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's fascinating for me because now I really get to concentrate and center in on um, a direct subject that Manley had been talking about opposed to pulling all of these other topics right. together. Right. And, so, and I, I love how they're kind of companion pieces to the text. Not a summation or a, yeah. even even a, just a critical inquiry into that text, but more of a, a companion uh, jumping off where you can bring in other ideas. Uh, the, signature, yeah. the signature edition of The Meanings of uh, Christmas that I edited just came out. So you'll have Did to you read that, that for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, my, it's, it's out now. It's, top, it's out top now. Top of my list. I, I saw it on Thursday. Um, at top of my list. It'll blow um, your mind. Yeah. It's, 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 un, it's unbelievable. It, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We're gonna. You know, maybe we'll do a PRS and conversation about it. So I won't say too much. But uh, these writings span uh, six decades. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 I think the last one is eighty-five, and the first one's nineteen twenty-three. All his ruminations wow. about the solstice, New Year, and Christmas. So I guess that's another plug. And you know, it's a holiday book, so we should put that in there. But that's uh, that's out. There's uh, others that are being edited by other people, and and Dave Orr has made. That. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful yeah. volume. Uh, the signature uh, uh, edition series. So that'll be on again prs dot dot org. Well, well, I, I wanted it's, to ask it's you. Funny about, when, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I was just going to say a funny little anecdote is when um, Greg started showing me all of these coming out in the signature editions that Dave Orr and you were a part of and Devin Dime was a part of. Yep. Um, I was like, oh, great. I just, my whole library is filled <laughs> with the pamphlets. Now I have to right. re-update them <laughs> with all the yeah. signature editions. Yeah. They have like almost every single pamphlet of the Manly <laughs> Lectures and now right. they're in these beautiful formats and now I have to like start from scratch again <laughs> no, I, I can't i can't wait i can't wait you know i have the uh some of the christmas uh his uh his story of christmas is is was published before in pamphlet i don't know mini essay pamphlet i don't know what you'd call it but i have it i think i bought it in the early 90s and i still have it and read it every year um and and so that's in there i'm i'm excited about uh i was excited about them obviously re re uh kind of repackaging and republishing some of the stuff and also including unpublished writings. But the fact that they're in a series and it's so yeah. aesthetically beautiful, it's bringing energy to it. And I was so excited to be a part of it, but yeah, yeah, check it out, read it for the season. Let me know what you yeah. think. Yeah. I can't wait. It's, it's seriously on the top of my list. I saw it on Thursday. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, before we go, um, you mentioned, we, you said uh, the five books over there, Give us a couple of the five books over there, or a few of the books over there that you. Oh uh, yeah, there's a are, lot more. Are requ- I know there's a lot more than five, but what's some recommended readings for uh, as we go into this, you know, this winter time of uh, lengthening days where we rest and get ready for oh. the new year ahead? What books do you got for us? That obviously secret teachings, but what else can you throw obviously at us? Obviously, secret teachings. And like for me, the Bhagavad Gita is a big one, but I'll go a little more modern. I would have to say. Um, the Occult I Ching by Maja is incredible. Great, great. Really incredible. Okay. Um, Mitch has done a great job. Some of the most inspirational reads I've ever had. Mitch has done a great job compiling a lot of essays by Neville Godard. Yes. And it's in a book called Infinite Potential. And great. Mitch is the one who introduced me to teachings of Neville Godard just mm-hmm. through his lectures and talking. And that has really change the course of my life for the most positive, I would say. Um, I would say, um, oh, here's a good one. Uh, here's a little plug too. Uh, the States of America by Greg, Dr. Greg yes, Sauer. Yes. That's a great one. It is a great one. Um, I was so happy that he, uh, that he produced that from those lectures because it needed to be in a form you can read and go back and it, it's not the same. So I'm glad he did the work because those were great lectures at a time where people, I think, needed to be thinking and hearing, you know, about stuff like that. And I was really the excited. Kabbalion. Yeah, States of America. Yep, Kabbalion. Yeah. That's a good one. That's Kabbalion. a good one. So we got Neville Goddard's then, book by Mitch Horowitz. It, yep. States yep, of America, Nos- Dr. Sawyer. Mm-hmm. Gnosticism by uh, Dr. Hellier. Yep, that's the new light on uh, ancient knowing, right? That's his, yeah, that's his masterpiece, I think. Even though all of them yeah. are good. Yeah, that book's unbelievable. Yeah, so there's... There's 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 some good stuff over there and that's all quite a it, list, man. That's good stuff. All of it's come come from a majority of the PRS. Also, there's um if anybody is interested in learning more about you know um, high magic and things like that, I have to really always direct them to the works of Damian Eccles, mm-hmm. and he wrote a great book called a High Magic and also um, Angels and Archangels, and both of those are incredible works. And um, yeah, there's so many. I even have autobiography of a yogi over yep. there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, a it's a pretty eclectic library. Yeah, well, and almost like almost every manly pamphlet that I think they <laughs> they've ever put out. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
it's great to end with uh, some more books to read. That's quite a list. And uh, as a reminder, uh, uh, we were talking about, uh, we, we came across the uh, Signature um, Edition series, and uh, more books are going to be coming out. That's a uh, Republishing or publishing new work of Manly, Manly Hall. Uh, the one book we were talking about was The Meanings of Christmas that's available on PRS.org, and there's, there's more coming, coming out the pike soon. Uh, so uh, stay in touch with uh, you know, the PRS.org, the bookstore. You can, again, donate. And, and uh, as you know, you get to experience this, but I, I did notice the calendar is really starting to fill up. That's exciting to see so people can... Um, follow all the events. And then a lot of that stuff is put on, on the YouTube channel. So uh, please subscribe. And so Courtney, I want to thank you for so much. We had talked about talking thank for you. about 30 minutes, but this is what usually happens. We're now well over <laughs> an hour. So thank you for spending uh, so much time. I, I loved hearing about your, your journey. It's, it's very inspiring. You, you, you not only gave a gift, but the, the journey that you undertook was a, a gift in itself as well. So uh, I, I know you're going to be busy doing other things and moving on. So I hope you take a moment to hear the, not only the compliments on the work, but the gratitude that people have that you, that you undertook this journey because um, no one else had yet, yeah, but you did you. Yeah. And, and you were helped and you had some great people to, you know, to yeah. help you, help you finish it. But, but you took that journey and uh, you left, uh, I mean, you've, you've brought a, you brought a treasure to add to this tradition and uh, and history of this of this amazing wow. part of the world with these incredible people so thank you thank you that's incredible it means the world to me i feel very honored and anything else that uh, we left out about the film we talked about uh, it's on it's on the prs of the mayo channel right now which I'm, hopefully greg will put a, a link in the bottom uh so people again can watch it uh and uh, the, the proceeds go directly to prs and Courtney, how should people best keep up uh, uh, with you? Is it CourtneySell.com or yeah, Cor Twitter? CourtneySellFilms.com. CourtneySellFilms.com. Great. Yeah, I don't really do. I only I only do Instagram. I don't really do social media. So the website would be It'd be the best. Probably the yeah. Best. Yeah. Well, I'm excited yeah. about the new project. Uh, that's great because I think yeah, you're gonna. It's, it's gonna perfect. kind of. You're gonna have a lot of. It, that could be a series in and of itself. I think Werner Herzog would be proud, my friend. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, James. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. And um, enjoy LA for me. Uh, say hi to everyone at PRS. And uh, thank you so much for sparing so much time. I know you're really busy. And um, I guess is it too early to, it's never too early. And we're in November to wish you a happy holiday season as we move into oh, that great ritual of, of the, <laughs> the darkest day and the shortest day and then the, the resurrection of the light. So... <laughs> Uh, have a great uh, holiday season and uh, and say hi to everyone at PRS for me. And thank you. Will do. Thank you.